Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya
जाए प्रभु हम जय जय प्रभु 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 जय जय प्रभु थाय घर हरे भरे भ हरि भर हरि भर गौर बेमनंदी शील प्रभु पाद की श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की निथाय गौर बेमनंदी It was a lot of prayers. We had to do. Maybe more than one. It's all an illusion. You're not this body, <laughs> but we got to work with it. So that's the problem. <laughs> Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya. Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Canto 7 champ chapter 7 what prahlad learned in the womb text number 41 Yadarto iha karmani Vidvan manya sakrinaraha karotyato viparyasam amogam bindate phalam yarata iha karmani vidvan manya sakrin naraha karotyato viparyasam Amogam bindate phalam Yadarta iha karmani Vidvan manya sakrin naraha Karotya to viparya sam Amogam bindate phalam
Amogam vidyate phalam Ladies, Yet, of which are they for the purpose, iha, in this material world, karmani, many activities, in factories, industries, speculation, and so on, vidvat, advanced in knowledge, mani, thinking himself to be asakrit again and again nara a person karoti performs atta from this viparyasam the opposite amogam unfailingly vindate achieves Falam, result. Mm. Mm. So, Pallad Maharaj is continuing to speak what he learned in the womb from his spiritual master Narada Muni. He's speaking to his uh, schoolmates. A materialistic person, thinking himself very advanced in intelligence, continually acts for economic development. But again and again, as enunciated in the Vedas, he is frustrated by material activities, either in this life or in the next. Indeed, the results of one attains are inevitably the opposite of those one desires. Hmm. Purport. No one has ever achieved the results he desired from material activities. On the contrary, everyone has been frustrated again and again. Therefore, one must not waste his time in such material activities for sensual pleasure, either in this life or in the next. So many nationalists, economists, and other ambitious persons have tried for happiness, individually or collectively, but history proves that there have been, they have all been frustrated. In recent history, we have seen many political leaders work hard for individual and collective economic development, but they have all failed. This is the law of nature, as clearly explained in the next verse. Next verse is really a powerful verse. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gyana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Thus, my Sri Gurave Namaha, Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa, Gadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam, Nama Om Vishnu Vadaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine, 
Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Vacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Pastyatyare Satarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nittananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Pancha kalpa drubhischa kripa sindhu vevacha vaditanam bhavane bhyo vaishnave bhyo namaho namaha. Hmm. In one lecture, Hila Prabhupada mentions, he says, there is a statue in France of Napoleon. Hmm. And there's another, like a little plaque, it says that Francis. France is Napoleon, Napoleon is France. But then, Napo France is there, but Napoleon's not. He's gone. <laughs> so, what does it mean, France is Napoleon, Napoleon is France? It's just some nice slogan that makes people think, but that otherwise has no meaning at all. He dedicated his ideas to making France a very powerful, you know, superpower in the, in the world, but he's gone. And his plans has also been frustrated. <laughs> now this is the history of great personalities, either political leaders, military persons, economists. They all have grandiose ideas on how to, I mean there may even be some altruistic feelings that they want to do good for others in the course of creating better situations, either materially, I mean, economically, politically, militarily. But in due course of time, everything is lost, or even, as it says here, one gets the opposite for what one desires. It's like Napoleon, how did he die? Uh, he was wounded during the fight with the British, and he was suffering, so he called for water, and they brought him horse urine instead of water, and then that caused him to die. <laughs> he drank it, because he was so thirsty. So yeah, so you might say, such a glorious person, what an inglorious death. <laughs> this is the history. You know, we see George Washington, big, they call it the founder of the, you know, our country in America, so many uh, successes in battle, but he died of syphilis, <laughs> venereal disease. So all these great, so-called great personalities by material, they make great endeavors to somehow or other uh, create some type of betterment in the lives of others. And we see, it goes on every day here. There are also more plans. But it's like a dog trying to catch his tail. <laughs> the dog spins around, he's running around, and his tail is moving at the same time. He's thinking, if I just run a little faster, I'll catch the tail. That means the tail goes faster too. <laughs> this is material life. <laughs> So, everything that is done in material loss, life is lost in due course of time, and there's always dissatisfaction in whatever results you get. You look for that beautiful girl, but it doesn't work out according to how you planned it. That man who was so successful in uh, the external world turns out to be a real dog at home, you know. So, you can't, you find that Whatever situation a person endeavors in order for improvement in this world, in fact, this is the point, that the more you try to perfect something in this world, or the more you try to uh, make something good by material standards, you bring in the opposite. You bring in suffering, you bring in defeat. It's the nature of the material energy. It's dual. So any material uh, 
endeavor has these two aspects to it, happiness and distress, or success and failure, loss and gain. So an intelligent person, you know, as it says in the Bhagavatam, doesn't take part in these activities, because knowing that all these activities simply lead into ultimately defeat. So the, the verse actually explains from this fifth chapter of the first canto that one should just simply endeavor for that situation which is eternal, which doesn't, what we say, uh, get destroyed by time. Everything in this world is under the time factor. And so people think, well, I, I might even understand that. I might even accept that principle, everything's under the time factor. But, but while I'm here, I can enjoy it. No. <laughs> even if you're rich, which is considered to be in a success in life, there's so much anxiety attached with wealth. <laughs> in fact, in the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, it mentions that there are 15 negative characteristics that come along with come along with great wealth. In the story of the Avanti Brahman, he mentions that. The fifteen things that are actually negative or inauspicious, causing one distress or suffering, even death, that come along with great wealth. <laughs> and the maze the most obvious thing, or the most constant thing, is anxiety. <laughs> People who are wealthy are always full of anxiety. <laughs> Will somebody steal my wealth? The anxiety to protect it in so many different ways. What to do with it, how to invest it. Uh, is my friend, is he really my friend or is he only a friend of me, me because I got money? <laughs> so you see, this is how the material world works. The more you gain something here, the more you create anxieties that come along with that material gain. <laughs> so then again, you know, a person might say, well, then I won't really try for all these grand things. I just want to live in this world, have enough to keep body and soul together, and maybe a little bit extra so I can then go out and enjoy every once in a while. But that enjoying spirit is also afflicted with or connected to the suffering because that is the problem and as long as one is trying to enjoy one will suffer because enjoyment is only allotted to one person Bhaktaram Yagya Tavasam Sarva Loka Maheshara Suhidam Sarva Bhutanam Shantam Mam Yantam Rishchiti that Krishna is Bhakta Bhakta means not only the enjoyer, but the only enjoyer. <laughs> we enjoy in relationship to that person who is always enjoying. <laughs> There's where we find enjoyment. If we go away from the source of enjoyment and take the energy of that person who is trying to enjoy, because then we cut that energy off from the source, at least by our consciousness, and therefore the energy has a whole different effect. So something is connected to the source, it becomes practically as good as the source and also enjoyable. Just like, just like uh, singing and dancing. So we sing and dance in kirtan. So it's joyful, it's happy. It's, it wakes up the mind and the spirit and it gives us the feeling of, and many times exhilaration, feelings of happiness, satisfaction. Uh, inner peace, so many things. But then again, that's uh, people who sing and dance on the outside or in a materialistic way, they, are, they may feel a little bit something better than what their normal state of affairs is. But it doesn't really satisfy them all because in order for them to do that, they have to get intoxicated to make it, to make it actually have any substance to it. That intoxication is simply annihilating one's present consciousness and going into a more form of suffering. Because the material world, again, is just another form of intoxication. Because that intoxication it is that everything is different than what people perceive it to be. <laughs> the perception is that there is some happiness here. 
and there's objects that we designate as forms of giving us satisfaction and happiness. And therefore, as the living entity makes an endeavor to find happiness in these objects or in individuals that they perceive will give them happiness, they find that there's always something different. That's why Prabhupada, he, he, can, he says here, well, the, actually the verse says, well, people who try for all these kinds of advancements in uh, material life, they're frustrated in this life and they create frustration for their next life. And what do they get? The opposite for what they try. Yeah, it's like that. So one who's actually intelligent doesn't waste time in material activities. Because they know there's no benefit in it. But there is benefit in activities that are related to the source of everything in Krishna or Krishna consciousness. Therefore one wants to use their time completely in Krishna consciousness not to divide our time between material uh, programs and spiritual programs. We can take care of our bodily lead, needs, such as family, wife, husband, and those things that are required in order to support this type of lifestyle. But that's, that's what is called concessionary in terms of what we need in order to l practice life in this world or practice Krishna consciousness. Outside of that, everything else will cause one uh, a waste of time or, or just, you know. But because the conditioned soul is still thinking that there is something in this material world that will give me some happiness, even though we might not even think of it in a, in a very, what we say, direct way, in the back of the mind it's still there. In the back of the mind, yet I haven't really tried this, or, or this really is, you know, maybe it might even work. It hasn't worked for everybody else, but I'm different because I, I can approach it from a different angle. <laughs> like that. But then the time factor is always there. And the time factor works for anyone who has a material body. But for a devotee, the time factor actually brings one to a better situation in life because the devotee is always moving forward towards what we say ultimate happiness or complete happiness, complete fulfillment in devotional service. And where is that found? Well, it's found in the process of... I was reading this morning in Srimad Bhagavatam, also in the seventh canto. This is interesting. I'll read the verse. It's in the very last chapter of the seventh canto, chapter 15. Very philosophical chapter. It's amazing. These state, these verses are just, you'd have to read them over and over again to really understand what they're saying. At least I had to. But there was one verse I was reading, and Prabhupada made it. And this is what, this is the absolute nature of Krishna consciousness. It's in verse number 64, yeah of chapter 15. Whatever, whatever we do, of course this is the verse, whatever we eat, whatever we, but Prabhupada says, whatever we think and whatever we plan is for the advancement of our Krishna conscious movement. Then he says, all these activities, whatever we do, plan or think, is oneness. There's a oneness about it because it's all directed to Krishna. So then Prabhupada goes on. There's no difference between chanting for Krishna consciousness and working for Krishna consciousness. On the transcendental platform, they are one. But, and Prabhupada qualifies that one must be guided by the spiritual master about the nature of this oneness and not manufacture your own ideas of oneness. Like that. So what Prabhupada is saying is that everything connected with Krishna in devotional service is on the absolute platform, and it's all one. But there is distinction in activities, because we also make that categorical distinction. There is sadhana, hearing and chanting. There's seva, which is the activities that we perform in relationship to the service that we are given. But on the transcendental platform, there's one like that. So this is an interesting point. 
And Prabhupada makes many interesting similar points. He's emphasizing the oneness of devotional service. Jai Sri Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. So these are, uh, so why waste time in material activities? I mean, you might think, well, I have to ride my bicycle, okay. But why do we do that? We're not there to, like, see the, the environment around us and go faster than the people who are walking. Yeah, there is that superiority that comes from bike riding. You think, well, you know, these guys are slow who are walking, but look at me. Uh, I'm moving along here. But that's not the idea. The idea is that there is some exercise needed, and that's, that's about the whole thing like that. So any activities which are needed to support this body, which we have to perform, should be done in the spirit of detachment, but done as a service to the Lord, both. Detachment form any kind of material conception of the activity and done only for this. And then when we see that we're doing activities that are of related to what do you call it? It's called gona bhakti, subsidiary or parallel activities to devotional service. They should be done in in a minimum amount of ways, not wasting time, because life is short. <laughs> right? You're here, right? We're happy you're here. I mean, that guy could have rode over you on his bicycle, and then you would have been a statistic, right? <laughs> Of course, we we're so happy that it didn't happen. Krishna protected you, actually. But this is the nature of the material world. Padam, padam, ya vi padam. That why play around with the material energy? Because as soon as you God deviate from Krishna consciousness, you're putting yourself in an energy that works in a dualistic way that something good could happen or something inauspicious or horrible could happen. If we stay in Krishna consciousness, keep our consciousness fixed in devotional service and everything we do, we're under the daivi prakriti. We're protected. We're free from the effects of the material energy. And that, and that means that whatever happens to you is actually given direct sanction by Krishna himself. So that's the safe place in this material world. We, because sometimes we have to speak, you know, but padam padam ya vi padam. It's a dangerous place. We all know that. And somebody who's alive today, right now, will be dead tomorrow. Many, they may not even know it, and this is a fact. There are people who are going on today, and tomorrow they'll no longer be existing. This is the way the world works, but they don't expect it. But it'll happen. Just the way this is the way the world works. It's a very dangerous place. And so therefore, devotional service is not only the means for success in all activity, it's the complete shelter away from all the inauspiciousness of this material existence. Stay connected in devotional service. And the best way you can stay connected is keep the mind focused on the activities of devotional service. And the best way to help us keep our mind focused on the activities of devotional service is to constantly chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. By can't constantly chanting, right, Sundar Gopal, I mean, you must have did a lot of chanting in these last few weeks, right? When you were conscious, anyway. Yeah, what else can you do? <laughs> you don't have meant much choice. But that, that lack of choice, in one sense, is a benediction because we all want to come to that stage of chanting always. So whether we come by force or we come by voluntary, we come. But it's not so good to come by force. It's come by a involuntary way. Because ultimately, when everything's taken away, what's left? Krishna and the Holy Name, that's all. Of course, the devotees are there to inspire us to chant the holy names. So, yeah, so therefore any, and this is an absolute principle, at least in the material sense, that any material activities end in defeat and frustration and disappointment at best. Disappointment at best, like that. So why waste time in these things? 
And Prahlad Maharaj will make a beautiful statement in the next verse to illustrate this same point. Okay, so I'll stop here. Questions? Sundar Gopal Prabhu. Um, what if we don't have this taste and knowledge how to perform a devotional service? We know that we should do this and it's auspicious for us and only thing that really matters, but if we don't have it in us, then it's, it's difficult. There. We just, the desire may be less, is I guess what that's what you're saying. The desire is not strong enough. Yes, or fate, or whatever. It's just, you know, that's material nature is stronger than, than bhakti for a lot of us. So. Sarusanga, sarusanga, sarusastri hoy, navamata, sarusange, sarvasiddhi hoy. There's, there's where we get the strength in association with devotees. So that's how you see when a person comes to Krishna consciousness, to the process of devotional service. They don't have that faith, may they don't even have the understanding of the practice, but through the association with devotees, it develops. So we have to think, well, given my particular situation, my responsibilities connected with that situation, responsibilities connected with that situation, how can I maximize association? And then Krishna will give you ideas how to do that. Like that. So association really is, it's the principle of happiness too. When we're in, when we're in association with devotees, we're happy. Because what do we do? Chant, dance, talk about philosophy, find some ways to serve together. And sometimes there is some negativity, but it's it's a little incidental, we just push it aside. But that negativity is more or less our own consciousness. As soon as you change your consciousness, you change the fact that the negativity is gone anyway. You know, today I love you, tomorrow I don't love you. But the next day I love you again. <laughs> so, so what's the difference? You're the same. It's the consciousness that keeps changing, that's all. So if we have a positive consciousness that when we take social association with devotees and try to take advantage of that association by hearing and if we can do some service in that association, that's even better. But just being by being in the association, we can remember Krishna. We can, we can, uh, we can think of ways to serve Krishna. We get inspired in the philosophy. We get inspired in our chanting. The body association is the most valuable thing. Anywhere, everywhere, you can't find it anywhere. When you lose that association, you start to appreciate it. And then when you come back to it, then you start to understand the value of that association, how wonderful it actually is. But sometimes because we have association all the time, we sometimes maybe take it a little bit less valuable or take it for granted. But then when we lose it, then we come back to it, then we understand, like that. So there's where, there's where the watering of the desire starts. And, and also grows in the association with devotees. And the more the devotees are senior, the more we can benefit by that association. But we have to be open if we're closed. Closed means the heart is, has its own ideas and wants to gain something or do something. But if we're open, 
In other words, when you go out in the sunshine, in the sun, if you want to, you know, increase your vitamin D by getting sun, more sun, you have to expose yourself to the sun. But if you're all covered up, then the sun is blocked. <laughs> Although you may be in that yeah, arena of the sun. So open your heart up in the association of devotees. That's why it's mentioned in the Sri what is it? Upadeshamrita, the six loving exchanges between devotees. To speak confidential thoughts, to hear confidential thoughts, to uh, give a gift to someone, and to receive gifts, and to offer Krishna prasadam and receive Krishna prasadam. And as Srila Prabhupada writes in the purport, practically in the very beginning of the purport, he said, We have established this Krishna conscious society simply to facilitate these six loving exchanges between Vaishnavas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the essence of our, uh, our association based on these six loving exchanges. And then when you go into the details of each one, you find that all the association that that is available covers these the activities of these six loving exchanges. So there's where here's where we can water that seed of desire, that seed of faith. So if we live outside with our home, I mean, Prabhupada recommends in Bhagavatam, invite devotees to your home, have kirtan, distribute prasadam, speak about Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. Association. It's not relegated just to the temple or to spiritual activities connected to the temple, we can create association anywhere just by arranging. Anything else? Urugai? <laughs> Did that help, no. Sundar Gopal? Yeah. As soon as you think of ways that, think, as soon as you think of, I'm going to do it, Krishna will give you the intelligence how to do it. Yeah. Uh, you, you were mentioning association of devotees once. Uh, I've been for, uh, uh, I was living for two months uh, without association of devotees some almost 10 years ago. And I was going with my, uh, and I was like missing, I'm missing, I was, and I was in the part of Slovenia where there is no chance of meeting devotees, this mm. my part where my parents live. Mm. And I was uh, going with my father to buy something in the evening in some electric appliances mm -hmm. shop and and I only saw one devotee, Mahi Bharta, Prabhu, yeah. and everything changed <laughs> in a second. And uh, it was no chance, uh, uh, I mean, zero chance that I meet this person there. Mm -hmm. But then somehow by Christian's arrangement, I, I only saw him and I didn't even have a chance to say hello. But then <laughs> again, yeah. faith came back and... Uh, you felt good, right? Yeah, <laughs> it happens. I had an experience yesterday. I went out for an evening walk, so I went into the park and I was walking around and, you know, it's all the, all the regular people are out there doing their different things. So I was out for a little while. On the way back, I saw one young man, so I thought I recognized it. And he was a guest that had come to our temple a few times. So just by seeing him, I thought, I felt really happy because <laughs> I... Uh, you know, I was just with the non-devotees for, I wasn't really with them, but I was just in that, 
atmosphere. So as soon as you see a devotee, <laughs> wow, hey, Haribo, <laughs> nice to see you. Even though I don't, when I see you in the association of other devotees, I don't really single you out. But now I see you in this situation, you're my friend. <laughs> it's like a whole different thing, you know. And, you know, just like we preach in jail, and sometimes when we come into the jail for people, the, the, the inmates just like, it's a whole different, it just takes them really, really to a whole level, different level of happiness. I become really happy to see a devotee. Oh yeah, it's like that. So why lose? Why why fail to appreciate what we have and then have to lose it and regain it to appreciate it? Uh, so that's that's Krishna consciousness, and that's what makes the essence of Krishna consciousness, uh, Vaishnav Sangha. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything else before we end? Okay, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.